So the last session, <coughs> it summed up and talked about harmony in of the self in the body. So till now, we have covered this harmony as an individual. We talked about harmony as an individual and then we expanded it saying that as a part of this I have to talk about harmony in self and harmony, self body. And harmony with body. So this is what we have talked about till now. Right? Out of these four levels we have to talk about starting with the harmony in the individual, harmony in family, harmony in society, harmony in nature and existence. So as a part of this harmony in individual, we have talked about harmony in self and harmony with the body. So this is what we have talked about till now. Okay. And in the last session, we have discussed about, in the context of this harmony with the body, we have discussed about the need of physical facility which is in the context of this feeling of Sayyam in the self. If this feeling of Sayyam has to be fulfilled, then I take care of the body. This taking care of the body is in the form of nurturing, protection and right utilization of the body. In order to ensure this, I need necessary physical facility. And that necessary physical facility turns out to be in terms of food for nurturing, the clothes and shelter for protection, and some means, some improvements for right digestion of the body. Then we identified that the quantity which are required for each one of these is limited. It may be little more or little less for someone, right? but then it is always limited. So one person may eat half kg of food. The other person may eat 1 kg of food. A child will eat 100 gram of food. Right? A grown up person may eat 1 kg of food. And then old man again will eat some 200 grams or 300 grams of food. It may be more, it may be less, but it is limited. <coughs> this is important. And that each one of us can calculate the need of physical facility for ourselves as individual or in the family. So if you do this calculation for yourself or for family, you can find out that it is required in a limited quantity. And I said only when you are able to see that this is required in a limited quantity, that this possibility of prosperity is possible for you. And it was in this context that I had defined Prosperity as feeling of having more than required physical facility. Now that this is defined, I can see whether I have more than this or not, whether I can have more than this or not. In that, whether I am prosperous or I can become prosperous or not. This each one of us can verify. And if you do this, most of you, would realize that you are already having more than what is required. In that sense, you will have the feeling of prosperity. Like Sangeji was telling that he is already feeling that he has more than what is required. What do we do? What do we do with the rest? So this feeling has to come. And when this feeling of prosperity is there, you immediately start thinking of nurturing others. On the other hand, if this feeling of prosperity is not there, you continue to think of exploiting others. That is the indicator. This nurturing the other or thinking of exploiting others is an indicator of whether you have feeling of prosperity or you have a feeling of deprivation. Very simple indicator. So all these people who have, you know, accumulated a lot of money, they still continue to exploit <coughs> others. That means they are still feeling deprived. Right? 
and this corruption is still a worst case of exploitation. Exploitation you do by legal means and illegal means, right? As long as you are exploiting people by legal means, it is not counted as corruption. When you start doing it with illegal means, then it is called corruption. So, corruption is worse than exploitation. Right? And exploitation is an expression of feeling of deprivation. So, if only we have the feeling of prosperity, the moment you have this feeling, you start thinking of nurturing others. Like this question is a natural question. What do I do with the rest of money? This is a natural question to come to you. And as I was also mentioning last <coughs> session, that this having more does not mean you will consume more. Because if you have the right understanding, you will eat food to nurture the body and not more than what is required for the body. Because overeating will result into good health or bad health? Bad health. So you will have more than what is required, but you will eat as much as is required. Not more. Similarly, you are wear clothes as per the requirements. And you will make house to, you know, provide necessary shelter, provide necessary protection to your body. So consumption will be as per the requirement. Production will be more than the requirement. Right? Then what will you do with the rest? You will use the rest for yeah, for fulfillment of relationship and fulfillment of human order in the society, right? in the community, in the nation. That is what is going to happen with the rest of the food, rest of the clothes, rest of the shelter, right? And interesting enough, if you really look at the amount of physical facility that we are producing. I showed you the very first day a report by the United Nations. Okay. It says that the amount of food that is produced, in fact it says the main heading was not produced, the main heading was the amount of food that is wasted okay, in a year is 1.3 billion tons. Eh? Million, huh? 1.3 billion tons and this if you calculate okay, and if you assume that one person will eat one quintal of food in a year on an average including everybody then it is enough to feed right, all 650 crore people for two years. How many people? 650 crore people right, for two years, which would mean we are wasting food which is twice the amount which is required for all of us. <coughs> Overall, <coughs> 4 billion ton is produced, which is 6 times what is required for all the people. <coughs> so what do you think? It is more than what is required, less than what is required? What is required? Six times. Then where is it going? One third is going wasted. Remaining two thirds, what is happening? So four times, what is happening? So you cannot eat <coughs> too much of grain. Okay. So what it is, what is being done is the grain is fed to the pigs, right? To the cows. And then they are eating the meat of the cow, meat of the pigs. So, in America, the amount of wheat that is fed to the pigs is more than the amount of wheat that is eaten by all the Indians and Chinese together. <laughs> more than 225 crore people, okay, the amount of wheat, wheat that is eaten by them is less than the amount of wheat which is fed to the people. And the conversion ratio is 13 is to 1. So if you feed 13 kg of wheat, it makes 1 kg of meat of the people. 
and you are eating one kg of meat. It means you are eating thirteen times. So depriving twelve people of their food. Okay. This is what I was discussing in this uh, uh, this myth, uh, simple workshop. And there was a professor from uh, Royal Royal Simpo College. Yeah, he was here for some time. What is his name? Ro. He is also from America. So he was telling me that this conversion ratio with the pigs is higher. With the uh, cows, it is something like 30 to 1. So we have to feed 30 kg of wheat to make wheat or maize. You know. Corn, huh? To make one kg of meat. So you are basically eating for 30 people. <coughs> now, what do you call it? Is it a right way of doing things? Eating 30 kg of food by converting into meat, one kg of meat. But this is what we are doing. So, so much is produced. Right? So, when it comes to the prosperity, the possibility of prosperity is already there. Six times. Right? So, what do you think? If there is so much of deprivation, is it because of lack of physical facilities? Or is it because of lack of relationship? Lack of relationship, which is in turn a problem of lack of understanding. So we don't have to work only on this issue of physical facility. We have to start working on the issue of right understanding and right feeling. If we have this right understanding and right feeling, we already have six times the physical facility required as food. So you will produce more, but you will not consume more, if you have the right understanding, if you have feeling in relationship, then you will produce more, but consume only as much as is required. Rest you will invest to ensure relationship and human order. That is what we are going to talk about next, talk about the relationship when we talk about harmony in family, when we talk about the universal human order, when we talk about harmony in society. So, we will invest that extra you know, for ensuring relationship and universal order, human order. So, ensuring harmony in family, ensuring harmony in society and so on. So you have to now start identifying your need of physical facility and also see whether you have more than what is required or less than what is required. Then find out whether you are having you know, prosperity, you have a feeling of prosperity or deprivation. Whether you can have the feeling of prosperity or you cannot have the feeling of prosperity. Start looking at it like the amount of wood that is required for you <coughs> to use wood for, you know, making furniture and then burning, you know, for cooking your food and so on. The amount of wood that is required for you for the lifetime <laughs> can be obtained from four full-grown trees. So if you cut full four, you know, four trees which are full-grown. The amount of wood that you would obtain out of it will take care of your lifetime. You know. And how many trees can you plant in your lifetime? Uh, 
How many? Sankar Jai. Hundred. Hundred. <laughs> yes. We are spending so much of time, so much of effort, you know, doing all kind of things, like playing football. Now, if you start investing that time and effort for growing trees, just think how many trees can you grow? One thousand acres. So certainly, one you know person can easily plant ten trees in his lifetime, which is far more than four trees, right? If you are very lazy, you know, even then you can plant ten. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you are little active, you can plant many more, hundred trees, like Sankar is saying. No? So, this possibility is always there. You have to find out whether this is possible for you or not. Whether you already have prosperity or you can have prosperity. Or it is not possible to have prosperity. This, I would say, is very important thing for all of us to decide because this is where we are stuck. Today the whole civilization is stuck here. We are not able to identify our needs. Okay? Therefore, even though we have more than what is required, we still feel deprived and we continue to accumulate. And because we continue to accumulate, therefore there is more deprivation. Like we were doing a similar calculation in India. Right? The amount of food rain that is available is 2.5 times what is required for all the people in India. And a very rough calculation. It was not a thorough calculation because a large number of things which are grown by the local people and you know, eaten is not there in the record. For example, we have a loose area, you know, of the seashore okay. and enormous amount of coconut is grown there. In fact, up to a distance of two kilo 200 kilometers from the seashore, you can grow coconut. One coconut, half ripe, is enough for nutrition of the body for a day. There is no record of how much coconut is grown. And it's a huge area. It must be almost, I think, more than a thousand five hundred kilometer long seashore we have in India. And it is going right up to the two hundred kilometers. So we can just calculate right, how much area you know, is there. And if you really think in terms of growing this coconut tree, they literally don't occupy any place, space. On the borders of the farm, you know, this farm, this fields, you can grow, grow them. This farm and this coconut. Okay. They take care of your food, they take care of your house. A right. few of, uh, you know, people there have conducted this experiment. One person by name, Dr. Parmeshwara. He was a nuclear scientist working in NASA. So one day, you know, somehow it is stuck and stuck to him that what am I doing? I am preparing you know, weapon to kill people. And it is not worth. So he was quite disturbed the whole day. Then night he packed up all his belongings. Next morning he left for his native place. And his native place is in uh, near this Visakhapatnam, uh, around uh, 300 kilometers from Hyderabad. It's on the seashore. And there is a village called Emanchandi where he stays. So he just came back to his village. And then he started thinking what he should do. So one idea which struck him was that, you know, there is a lack of nutrition. So let us do something about it. After consulting with senior people there and all, you know, he concluded that these two things are very easy to grow and very useful. 
So he said, if you have one palm tree or one child, it will take care of his lifetime. So he said, okay, very simple thing. We will grow this, you know, coconut tree and the palm tree in any, 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 any place which is vacant in the village. He tried it out in 100 villages. Today, if you go to those villages, you will not find any area you know, left unattended. And it is full of coconut and palm trees. At least every village will have 5,000 trees. Like this is, there is so much of space here, right? You will not find any space which is left unattended. Either it will be a coconut tree or a palm art tree. Now, this, and this is just five years, you know, it took him to grow all this. Now, one village, 5,000 trees. And one coconut this thing, you know, is giving 200 fruits in a year on an average. Now think how much it comes to. <coughs> how much? 10 lakh. So 10 lakh fruits you are getting in a year. <coughs> and if there is 1,000 people, right? Then 1,000 fruits per year, per person. Far more than what is required. And this is extra, other than the fields. Right? <coughs> Paddy is grown and all that. So simple. And if you look at the children there, <coughs> You, they, you, they will seem so healthy. On an average, you are getting three coconuts per day. Far more than now. And this palm tree, the trunk of the palm tree, you know, it is stronger than the wind that we put you know, in your house. It goes for 200 years. To put a beam of palm tree. It will last for 200 years. So simple to do. And this is on something which is not used, you know. Just on the, in fact, if you know this, you, know, you don't have these structures of field here, but in the plain area, if you are growing field, you generally keep your uh, you know, side of the field very high so that water can accumulate. So it has to have, be high and it has to be little width also. In that width, you can grow this tree. And it does not throw a whole lot of shade in the field also, so that there is no problem with the you know, so crop. So you can do that. If you start looking at that, you know, in this manner, a lot of possibilities will come. And I was looking into this Bhutan, you know, kind of available area. What do you think? How much area is available per person in Bhutan? What will be the order? Thirteen. Square meter. Take a total area, total kind of area of Bhutan and divide it by the population, which is around 7 lakhs, right? 6 lakhs 91,000. It turns out that per person you have 18 acres of land. 18 acres. So if you have a family of one, you know, 10 people, you have 180 acres of land. You can't even walk, you know, that 180 acre in a day. <laughs> Just think how many trees you can grow there. And what kind of trees can you grow? How much fruit? How much medicine you can grow? Think of it. 180 acres for 10 persons. You say, no, no, this is mostly under the forest. But then a lot of things are growing in the forest, right? <laughs> More, lot of things can be grown in the forest. If it can be
can be grown on the border of the field. Right? But only it can be grown in the forest. You can do dairy farm also. Dairy farm also you can do. Yeah, yeah. Dairy farm. Many people can start thinking of 180 acres of land. Yeah, yeah. But even if it's 7%, it is quite enough. But I am saying the forest is not something useless. There is lot of possibility in the forest. I mean nobody would have thought that you can grow the coconut trees and the palm trees just on the part of the you know, field and have more than what is required for all the people as food grain. So this is about the prosperity. This is about the need of physical facility and the feeling of prosperity. So let us see. Two questions to ask. Is there anybody who requires a physical facility in unlimited amount? Unlimited quantity? No. Very good. So now cover half the distance. <laughs> yeah, it is important because then you can start paying more attention to right understanding your right feeling part. Otherwise, you are busy trying to accumulate more and more physical facility. The second question is, you find out, tomorrow I will ask you again, whether you have this feeling of prosperity or not, whether you can have this feeling of prosperity or not. That will require some more calculation for you, so one day time is good. <coughs> so tomorrow we will ask that question. So these are the two questions from my side. If you have any question on this, we will take it up. Otherwise, we will start our discussion on harmony in family. <coughs> Finally, reduce that 
So, can I run this song? Ah. <laughs> <laughs>